I'll put a bit of orange in there as well, actually, and make it a bit brighter. I'm just putting together burnt sienna and orange in there, just mixing it in a little little container. So that's one colour. The next colour I'm going to mix up will be a. Actually, I've already got some blue mixed up here. So I've got some blue in this um, container here, which I'll probably dilute down a bit because I don't want it too strong. I'm just putting some water in that. It's a bit weaker. Just need a little piece of paper just to test the colour on. So, it's a fairly, fairly weak blue. Might put a little bit of red in there actually. There we go, it's a bit better. Sort of a greyish bluey colour. So that's my first two colours. So I'm going to take the uh, the first colour of the bluey bluey red, which is pretty dilute. Starting, I'm leaving this top section um, unpainted because I don't want um, I don't want that to be filled in. So I'm just going to create this sort of cloudish shape, which is going to come over. Few bits of blue there, and then we've got some blue, some blues down the foreground, or bluey greys, I should say. That's fine. And then before that starts to dry, I take the thicker, and this is thicker this colour. So the thicker orange. Lay my board a bit flatter so it doesn't run too quickly. And then I'm going to start to drop this in to those blues. Possibly a little bit too orange. I might need to go a bit e more yellow. Could have really left the um, the top of the sheet dry, which would have given me a bit more shape to the trees, but it's fine. I'm going to put a bit more yellow in now. So, okay, I've got a yellow mixed up here. It's like a lemony yellow. I'm going to put some of this in. A bit more of a golden. A goldeny colour. So coming down and then out to the right. And then perhaps a little bit over towards the left. Then it goes quite green then. So I let the two colours mix a bit more. I mix the yellow and the green and the blue together on my palette. Bring a bit of this green in. Oops, don't want it to run too quickly. Just flatten the board out. So coming back towards the right, the greens, a bit more green. Get slightly darker with that. A bit more blue in there. Come down to this right hand side and then I'm going to get a nice a nice dark patch in this right hand corner so I'm going to dip into some um, some Payne's grey and some very very dark blue Payne's grey and a very dark blue and I might even put a tiny touch of crimson in there. Just a little bit of crimson just to give a tiniest bit of purplish tinge to it but it's very dark and I'm going to bring that now in this bottom right hand section. So all the way in a little bit. Just let that creep down into those greens. Wash that brush off. Just 
cleaning my brush now. And go back into my greeny colours. <coughs> Bring a few more of those in here. Slightly stronger. Move that edge. Just want to merge those colours together a bit. Bring a bit more tone down the bottom here. Okay. Put some tissue. We'll mop up the excess. And then before it dries, just going to go in with a slightly stronger bit of burnt sienna and perhaps a bit of red and put some fairly strong accents into this bit of the tree. just to give a bit more tone depth to the reds. So this is a very thick colour. And obviously it's still a little bit of moisture in the paper. So it's bleeding together nicely. <clears throat> a little bit of that same burnt sienna down the foreground. Here and there. A few little spots. Just clean off the brush. Then I need to dry that now before I can put the next layer on. I'm just going to take off this excess. I just tip it a little bit just to get that dark colour to move a tiny bit more. <clears throat> okay. That's enough. Right, I'm going to dry that off. Okay, so unfortunately a little bit of water fell off my hairdryer. I smudged it there, but never mind. It added a bit of texture. <laughs> so now then I need to go in and add a bit more tone, strengthen it up a little bit. <clears throat> I need to re-wet because I want to keep it quite soft still. I'm going to re-wet the this area so I can bring some more colours 
or some slightly darker colours into my foliage. Just come down into that tree there a bit. And ideally with clean water you want to do this. Otherwise you're just going to add too much dirt into your painting. So just coming down. Well, I'm going to have a little path there somewhere, so let's just bring it back. Bring it back this way. And then let it meander out water. So that's probably enough. And then into some colour. So some slightly darker greens this time. Put a bit of brown in it and some blue. Just quick, so it's a bit quite a bit darker. Now bringing this dark green up. I'm going to go a bit darker than the painting just because I want a bit more tone in here to make the trees shine a bit more. Bring a bit of um, a bit more yellow into that. More yellow. Have a little bush there. Make it a bit stronger. Because even though this looks pretty dark now, it will dry a fair bit lighter. I'm having to sort of go a bit stronger in order to um, cater for that. Let's just take that out. Maybe make a few little rock shapes here. <coughs> and then on this side, I might as well just put that in at the same time. This is going to be green. This is onto dry paper. More brown in that. Just to help my path meander through. Coming down, there's sort of a rock in there somewhere. Okay, let's just suck up some of this excess. Don't need all of this. And just mop some of this up. Not sure where I put the water on, it was a bit dirty, so I'm just going to mop that water line so it's not too sharp. A bit too liney. Take out a bit more over here. Move some more of these edges. Break this edge up a little bit with some tissue. Again, so it's not so so sharp. So just dabbing, just dabbing the edge here and there, not everywhere, because obviously it will get really undefined if you overdo it. It's just in places. Probably enough. Okay, let's leave that and just dry that off quickly.
It's got a little bit liney there. I probably could have controlled that edge a bit better, but never mind. Okay, now a rigger, you know, rigger pen, uh, brush. So what I'm going to do now is put in some of the um, vertical marks. I'm just going to use Payne's Gray for this. It's nice and easy. A bit of Payne's Gray and a bit of brown together. Fairly, fairly dry. I don't want the marks to be too solid. So coming from, I don't know, somewhere about here, leather trunk kind of coming up. Some branches coming out of it. Maybe a few more to back here. Some slightly browner ones, I think, a little bit less dark. Coming down into this dark area. <laughs> then we'll have some <clears throat> slightly rock type shapes, which I can use to cover some of the ends of those pieces of paint that I've just put on. Just mixing up some of that brown and grey together, a bit of green. So just some of the paint that I've got in the, in the palette really, I'm not mixing up an entirely new colour. Just sort of a mucky greeny grey colour. And then I'm just going to bring on some rock type shapes. just to lose some of the bottoms of those trees and um, kind of pull it together a little bit. Just a few marks down into the dark area. Try and de-emphasize that edge a little bit. Maybe make these rocks a bit bigger, bolder. Perhaps a couple on the edge of the pathway. Make this bit a bit darker. And then just to finish off on this little sketch, some lighter bits. I'm just going to use a bit of white. Just a little bit of white watercolour. Just dipping straight in there. Bring a few of those um, branchy kind of effects from the dark area. Just one or two. That's the odd light hitting a stone here or there. A light on the pathway. And uh, maybe the odd, just a little bit up there. That's it. Right. So the top part of the sky, remembering that we're going to leave this band of dry area. So I'm going to wet 
the first part. So I'm going to give it a bit of an undulation because obviously we want it on a hill. So the sky is kind of coming through and then up. And I'm going to tip it that way a bit so that the moisture goes up the paper. Like so. So picking up some greys off the board that I'm working on, which is a bit of a nuisance, but never mind. So now I'm going to dip into some fairly light colours because it's not oh, a dirty brush there, got green in it. So fairly light colours, so some a little bit of blue, not too much. I'm just going to work a bit of that in into this wet sky. So it looks like there's a tiny bit of um, some sort of brown. It's like a raw rumber, but I'm going to raw rumber here. So I'm just going to use um, a bit of brown there. Let's just re wet my paint because I can't see what colour we've got. I don't even think I've got a raw rumber. Um, what's that? Oh, that's a brownish colour, that'll do. So this is like a burnt umber. And I'll put a bit of yellow ochre in that as well. Make it a little bit more like raw umber. So yellow ochre and some burnt umber. Just to give me a brownish colour. So I'll have a little bit of that in the sky. Not too much. That'll do. Give that a little spritz. Just to mix the colours. It's a bit heavy over there, so I want to wash that away a bit. Just tip that out. It's got a bit heavy. Mop that edge up. And I'm going to bring a bit of blue. Some more of that blue with a clean brush, ideally. Into the bottom of the sky. About there, that will do. And just let that move. Now, before this starts to dry out, so I'm looking at the paper to see how wet the sky still is. And I need to now start to think about getting on some of my brown colours. So taking more of that same brown, the burnt umber brown. I'm just going to put it on my rigger. And then wherever I think the trees are going to start, I'm just going to touch the edge of the wet from the dry area and just let it creep up. So you see I get a dry bit here and then this is wet. Just tip that a little bit more. Come in a bit more. A few more of these trees along here. along this edge. Try not to space them all out at the same distance. Give some of them more space, some of them less space. Sorry Stuart, what colour is that? It's just like brown, um, uh, uh, brown. just brown. Okay. okay. Yeah. Add a bit more colour into some of those, make them a bit stronger. Bring it over a little bit further. So we might need to darken those up in a bit. Now, 
going to lay it fairly flat now. And remembering that we want to keep a band here of dry, I now take my big mop brush and I'm going to run it along the edge of those trunks, the tree trunk bottoms. So I hit all the bottoms and then I bring it. So I'm leaving a, a band of dry paper in that middle bit. Just make sure that doesn't get wet. If it gets wet, then you're going to wreck the whole, the whole thing. So to a bigger brush now, back into the brown. I add a little bit of Payne's grey in there as well to darken it up a bit more. And I'm going to drop this now along that edge to darken all that up. It needs to go darker still. So along the edge of these trees. up into the tree trunks a little bit. And then we'll give it a small gap. And then we're going to go pretty dark over this side. And he's actually brought it up to meet the sky on this side. So he's merged it a little bit. So we'll do the same. Merge it into the sky there a touch as a bush of some description. A bit more dark. Just a bit stronger. Now what I need to do is take my um, spray bottle. So I'm actually gonna tip the board towards me now slight angle and I'm going to spray this as we did with the um, you know the, the watery painting that kind of came down all the way to the bottom so we're just introducing some moisture into the paper just going to add a bit more in there all the way across there we go now, taking some, before I add any more paint, I'm going to run a bit of gum arabic into this. If I can get it open. So, taking um, a brush, greenish brush. And I want the gum arabic to be sort of under this sort of tree area. I'm just going to run a bit of gum arabic in here. So it comes up, congregates in this middle bit, <clears throat> a little bit higher there. A bit more coming down. That's enough. Wash that off. So then, <clears throat> going to take some of the um, slightly stronger brown and ochre. Possibly there's some black in there as well, but probably some Daniel Smith black, I imagine. And you might try it with just running some granulation mediums through it, just to see how that works. So I'm going to run this now into my gum arabic. So this is the ochre sort of browny colour now that I'm running here. Let it run down. And obviously, if you're going to put salt on or something of that description, then you'll probably want to put this brown on first and then run the salt through it afterwards. <clears throat> Rather than put the salt on first, put the salt on last. 
So let's run that all the way through. Perhaps even a bit over this side. Need to get some reds in there as well. Let's get a bit of red going on. Already brown. <clears throat> bring some of that in. So this is all wet, remember, at the bottom still. I'm going to run some red into there. And into the gum arabic as well, perhaps, a little bit. A few bits of red. Perhaps a bit more red this side. Okay, clean the brush off. Now, I need to just mop up some of that at the bottom because it's collecting along that bottom edge. Just going to remove some of this excess. And then before it starts to dry, I'm just going to get some of the granulation medium and just run some of that into it. Over that tool. So for that, I'm just going to use a pipette. Just suck up some of the granulation medium. A little bit flatter. And then we're just going to drop that into just some different places. Get it to run down towards the bottom. A bit more. Some of this I don't know is going to granulate brilliantly, but never mind. Just run some of it through. <clears throat> Probably need a darker, a darker black in there. Might get some of the Daniel Smith black on. bit of this darker black in. A few spots here and there. Might even have a little bit of that in the trees. Darken them up a bit more. Probably could have plumed those a bit more actually. Just darken this up a bit more. I'm going to run some water through that. Come 
come a bit darker over here as well, this side. And then give that a little, a little spray, a tiny spray. And tip it. Now then, I'm just going to run a little bit more water through here just to get it to move. Some of this black that I've just put on. Better. Let's just leave that for a minute and see what that does. I won't play with it too much. I'm going to mop up this bottom edge. I'm to tip it back a little bit, actually. I'm getting quite a bit of a line there. Just block that off. Really want to line there. Let's keep that nice and soft. Okay. I think that will probably do that one for the minute. Just see how that granulates, if at all. Starting to granulate here quite nicely, getting some action going on. There we go. The first part of this little exercise is going to be to do the, um, usually the sky, and in this instance it is still the sky. So I'm going to wet and it looks like the yellowy kind of colors come most of the way down the board. So I'm going to wet the whole, pretty much the whole thing, all the way down. There we are. So the whole, the whole sheet's wet now. So the first color is going to be um, like a brown ochre again. So I'll take some yellow ochre. I'm going to put a bit of orange in there as well, just to jazz it up a bit. It's not so dull. So let's get that on first. So this is the ochre going on, ochre and orange. I'll have some of that, leave a few breaks. And then also while I've got that colour on, mm, colour on the brush, I'm actually going to put some in at the bottom as well. Bit more brown in that, some of the darker brown at the bottom of the board. A bit more ochre, a little bit heavy. Just let that creep up over time. So, into that initial wash, let's just clean my brush off. I will drop a little bit of, uh, it looks like sort of a Payne's grey bluey type colour. I don't want it too heavy, so I'm going to put a bit of cobalt in there. So it's sort of Payne's grey and cobalt together. 
and then I'm going to bring that in this top edge and let it just bleed down. So I went too strong. Just going to bring it in and just let it percolate down. That's probably enough. Tip the board a little bit more just to encourage it to come down the paper. You just have to bear with it, don't rush it. Might wash that edge out a little bit as well, which is probably going to be a bit heavy. Look at that blue to come over a bit more. Just going to give it a little spray. The spraying just encourages the paint to move a bit quicker and in the direction that you want it to go, hopefully. Just going to get rid of this excess. And then turn it the other way. And again, just another little little spritz just to move that paint a tiny bit. A bit heavy there. Just get that blue to creep down a bit more. <clears throat> and it's at this point you want to just be a bit patient and don't put too much water in there. It is still moving, but just slowly. And if I go in there too heavy handedly with some water, I'll just cauliflower the whole thing. And let's just let that continue to run down for a minute or more. And whilst that's doing that, I can actually drop a bit more colour in the here. So let's just do that. A bit more brown. Come a bit darker than the ochre. So bring into a stronger band of colour in here. That's just a bit more ochre on the edge of that band. And then I'm just going to spray, spray it, and also tip it a little bit just to get it moving, <clears throat> and also to even the paint out a touch. evening that wash out as it comes up the paper. Right, spin that back round, flatten it out. And then I need to dry that off now.
Okay, now, using the rigger, if I can find it, where have I put it? There it is. I'm just going to get that far hill line in next using the ochre colour. And also, whilst I do that, I'm going to take a bit more water and a clean brush. And I'm actually going to wet the edge of the hill line first. So let's see how dry it is. So coming up, I'm going to give myself a little bit of light in the uh, in the distance. So maybe about here, start the hill line. Bringing my paint, uh, sorry, water dips down and then maybe it comes back up and across. So that's my first hill line. Take the colour, run it along that top edge of that water and away. Let's go a bit stronger on this right hand side. That's hill number one. And then again, I need to dry that. And then land bit number two. Again, I'm going to put some water back into the area. So re-wetting where I want the hill line to kind of come through. Kind of come up a bit higher there and then across and then away. And then with the rigger again, with the slightly gray color, A, a touch more colour into the mix just to make it a bit darker and then I've got my wiggly tree line so the tree line I'm going to draw I'm going to paint that into the dry and let the bottom kind of just mingle with that water that I've just put on I'm painting into the dry area and the bottom area is obviously wet so that gives me this um, wet dry kind of um, effect where I can control the shape of the of the trees and then I can just let the bottom go nice and soft so then we're all nice and bubble across there not too strong in the middle because obviously we've got our little church to come in just come up a little bit higher there. <clears throat> and then I'll just let the colour wash away on that left hand side. So it's not too strong. And then if it is too strong, all you do is you just take your, your brush and you can just wash out some of the paint that you don't want underneath that edge so it's nice and soft like that okay and then again i need to to dry that off <clears throat> And then in the next 
row, we've got the, the church to consider. So again, I'm gonna add some water. The water's getting a bit dirty here now, but <clears throat> I'm gonna add some water into this lower section. Just a band of it. <clears throat> keep it so that I can keep the paint nice and soft. Could wet the whole bottom area again if you really want to. Might do that actually. And then taking I don't know, various colours. So to start on this left hand side, sort of orangey browns. Let's go a bit orangier. <clears throat> and then again in dry area, just start my trees off and let them kind of just bleed down and just make that hill line a bit higher. Kind of coming up cross and then we're going to sort of I'm going to go a bit purpley a bit more purple oops got a hair on my brush coming across and then we're sort of to the church so the church has got a bit of drawing involved right. we'll change the color again a bit of bluer more blue into that purple so the spire is going to be about here somewhere so bring the spire down and then start to angle it out slightly on both sides coming right down to that initial piece of colour. Give it another spindly bit on this side and then join up to the rest of the wash. Coming across trees come up All the way across to the side. A bit darker. And then again, need to dry that. we put on the last dark layer And then the last foreground area now, we'll just take some water again and I'm going to re-wet a band through the middle here. So just some water there and then take the rigger again and just remember to make the colour a bit stronger than what it was previously and I think I will come in from the left hand side so the orangey colours there orangey browns on this right uh, sorry left hand side leaving a bit of a gap where the moisture you know it's going to be a bit misty
now coming up. Just leave a nice jaggedy edge. Probably could have left a bit more mist there, but never mind. Darken it up now. A bit of red. More blue. And then took my big brush. And I'm just going to wipe out that section to soften it off. And there we go. 